Hi, welcome back to Cuzzy Sound. This is episode three of my series on my Project 9 DIY modular system. And in this episode, come on, let's turn something down a bit. In this episode, we'll be looking at voltage controlled oscillators, which is what you can hear buzzing away in the background. And we'll be starting with the first PCO that I built for the Project 9 which is based on a 555 counter. I decided to build that one because of uh, the experience that I had building an Atari Punk console, which is two 555 counter VCOs uh, that kind of interfere with each other and make some crazy sounds. But this time round, I wanted something that was a little bit more controllable, a little bit more playable. Um, so I kind of looked around at what was out there, came up with a, de a design and a few modifications of my own and decided to test it out by prototyping it on a breadboard layout to see whether my idea would actually work and whether it was worth pursuing. Um, as you can hear it, uh, it actually turned out quite well but we can go and have a look at uh, a clip that I made when I was testing the prototype then when we come back I'll show you just what this 555 VCO actually does when it's mounted in the Project 9 modular system. This is the Project 9 synth basic oscillator test. It's oscillator based around a 555 timer chip. So what we're going to hear first is the square wave output. Okay, and then using uh, an RC network, I'm also attempting to produce what approximates to a triangle wave output. Probably not true triangle, because um, it's basically a modified square wave, but it sounds pretty close. Yeah, not quite as harsh as the square wave. So on the finished design, um, it's going to use a 556 chip. There's going to be two of these oscillators. Um, they're going to have CV input as well. That's simply going to pin 5. Um, but on 556, obviously, there'll be two of these. So I'll have a, a twin oscillator and you'll be able to switch between square wave and triangle wave output. Yeah, pretty successful test if I say so myself. Well, encouraged by prototype success, I went ahead and built a module to put in the Project 9. Um, the whole point of doing this is I want something that I can play, so I'm not going to get too wrapped up in all the electronics. Um, I don't know all the theory anyway. Um, I know enough to kind of get things up and running, but that's about it. If you want the theory, there's plenty of other people out there on the web who know a hell of a lot more about it than I do. So, as you saw earlier, I came up with a, a design that would give me both a square wave output, and I'll, I'll show you what the square wave output sounds like. So there's no processing, this is just the square wave output, you can change it. I actually set it so it'll do a really low frequency. It 
it's got that real rasping, harsh square wave sound, which sometimes is great, adds resonance. Flick it over to the triangle wave. A little smoother, but still got quite a lot of resonance in it. Now what I found... What I found was that because of the way I'd done the passive filtering to get the triangle wave, I was losing a lot of the signal. So, uh, an improvement on the original design for the circuit, um, well, the schematic, I'll put a picture of that up in a moment, but the modification on, on the original design was to add uh, a buffered output um, by using a, um, an op amp with a, a very very simple feedback uh, system so that I, I get a, a much cleaner, much better output um, and I don't lose quite as much of the, uh, um, the volume really when I'm switching from one thing to another. So, so that's the, the basic oscillator. I also, because I'm getting quite a lot of output from this, I also put a volume control on there. Um, because some of the other things in, in Project 9 don't have quite as much power in their output and things can kind of take over and dominate and interfere. So I helped that one by putting the volume control in there. But other than that, you know, it's pretty much uh, a very simple, 555 counter chip used as a, a voltage control oscillator. Now that's it, voltage control, so what can we do with it? Oops, slightly flaky leak there. Well what we can do, we can put a control voltage in. So, I've got it connected up at the moment to uh, a beat step. Now the thing is, with this, is it's not uh, an exponential CV. The oscillator is linear, so it won't follow the one volt per octave. So if you plugged a, a, a one volt per octave keyboard in and played it, it would not stay in tune, <laughs> not by a long way. What you can do with something like the beat step or, or a Baby 8 uh, sequencer is you can actually tweak the voltages, and so you can actually tune it by ear which I'm growing to like that, it's kind of, it feels more like I'm, I'm having to play the instrument rather than program the instrument, um, which is great when you're playing with a, a, a modular synth system. But, having said that, here's a program sequence out of the beat step. So, we have voltage control, but we can make it even more interesting if we start adding other modules in there. Now these will be modules that I will talk about in future episodes, so yeah, please come by. So if we take the output, instead of putting it straight into our speaker, if we put it through, where's that triggering? That's triggering there. So, what I've done now is I've taken the VCO output, put it into a Vactrol VCA voltage control amplifier, and the Vactrol is being triggered by an envelope generator.
So we're now able to shape the sound, but we can do even more with this. If we now take the output from that first electrode, which is being shaped by the envelope, and we then put it into a second vitrol which is triggered from a low frequency oscillator which we'll be talking about So we've now, we've not only shaped it by the envelope, but we're modulating it with an LFO. So I've got a kind of a, a tremolo effect going on it now. I think what I'm trying to demonstrate is that Starting with a very simple, very basic oscillator that has the facility for some voltage control with a couple of what's going to turn out to be quite simple circuits as, as we go through, we'll, we'll see what these, these uh, circuits are. We kind of end up with something that's, uh, yeah, a little bit more interesting. If I can do this, and I'm not an electronic expert, then you should be able to do this as well. So go on, have a go, build your own. <laughs> 